Hi everyone, and welcome again to Nettle, the go-to place to learn about business, finance, economics, and much, much more. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click that bell notification button below so that you never miss fresh videos and tutorials you might be interested in. Many thanks to our current Patreon supporters and YouTube members for making this video possible, and we'd also greatly appreciate if you consider supporting us as well. So please check the link in the description and click the join button below for more details. My name is Sava, and today we're investigating a key question in portfolio management, which is how often should one rebalance their portfolio and uh, what considerations should the portfolio manager take into account when determining that. And to investigate this quite important issue, we have got a simple case to uh, study where we've got 10 years worth of daily data on five US stocks and will form a 20% equally weighted portfolio and uh, study how often should we rebalance that and consider various possibilities, consider various uh, simulation tricks that one can apply in Excel to study it better and learn how fees come into the picture and how they can discourage the investor from rebalancing more frequently. First of all, let's say that we input our target allocation here with 20% each. Obviously, we could do any other allocation whatsoever. You could get um, another allocation which is not equally weighted, for example, value weighted, or you could say 40% in Walmart, 40% in Caterpillar, and 10% uh, in Apple, whatever. Or you could use this uh, allocation as a result of some portfolio optimization technique, which we've got a plenty of in our portfolio management playlist. So check this out after this video if you are interested. And uh, we'll just make sure that the sum of weights comes to 100%. And we'll first consider that we rebalance, well, let's say every day, which effectively would be a fixed weight portfolio where you rebalance as often as possible to maintain the target allocation, then we'll depart from this assumption and allow our investor to rebalance at any frequency whatsoever. We'll build our template to be as flexible as that. And we'll consider a trading fee of 1%. So every dollar of trading volume or every pound of trading volume, whatever, uh, brings uh, you to pay 1 cent or 1p of uh, fees to your broker. First of all, Let's consider that our starting portfolio value is 100, and that means that we can uh, break that down into positions in individual stocks. So we refer to the portfolio value at the start, multiplied by the initial target weights, so 20 in each of the five stocks. And then we need to make sure that we understand when to rebalance and how to rebalance, and how to keep track of ever-changing position values as time goes on. So here we have got uh, 2,518 training days and uh, we have also numbered them from 0 to 2,517. And we can use the mod function, which is the remainder from division uh, function, to implement uh, periodic rebalancing every uh, several number of days. And to do that, well, we can use the if function and check if the remainder, so the mod, of our day, trading day number, and the rebalancing frequency, which is inputted here, and we lock the column for the uh, day ID, and we lock both for our um, uh, rebalancing frequency. If this is zero, then it means that we need to rebalance. And that means that we should take our portfolio value and multiply it by the target weight. So we bring our portfolio value back to the target weight. And we'll have the row here as target weights don't change with time. That's their purpose. However, if we are not um, yet due or rebalancing, we just keep the position as it is. And that will allow us to flexibly rebalance or not, depending on uh, whether we should or not based on our frequency. And we can also calculate our trading volume in percent. Why in percent? Because it allows to apply fees quite a bit easier. So we calculate the sum of the absolute changes in relative positions. So sum of the absolute changes from rebalanced positions divided by the portfolio value minus the non-rebalanced positions divided by the portfolio value. And here, as we have just started our portfolio and no prices have changed yet, the trading volume is obviously 0%, 
and we would not incur any fees whatsoever. Starting from the second trading day, we need to keep track of our position values and how they change with time, multiplying our position value uh, in the previous day, uh, taking into account any rebalancings, multiplied by the new uh, value of the total return index for a particular stock, and divided by the value of the total return index or the closing price, depending on what you use, in the previous day. And here we can see that due to the fact that Apple has appreciated uh, in this day, the position value in Apple has grown to 20.31. We can drag it across and study how each position value changes and have our gross portfolio value as the sum of the new position values. And that would allow us to calculate the gross portfolio return, dividing the gross portfolio value today by the gross portfolio value yesterday and subtracting one, seeing that overall our portfolio has returned 3.03% on this trading day. And then we can simply drag this uh, functions down and see that as we rebalance every single day, here we need to evenly split our new portfolio value between the five positions, resulting in each position being uh, valued at 20.61. So again, to spread it evenly. And finally, we can also see that we had to trade 1.39% of our portfolio, uh, reallocating our capital here. So it means that we incurred some fees and our net return is going to be smaller than our gross return. To incorporate that precisely, we can calculate our net return as 1 plus gross return times 1 minus our trading volume times the fee that we have to lock both row and column wise minus 1. And we see that our net return in this day is one basis point lower than the gross return. It might not seem as a big deal, but given the fact that if we rebalance every day, we incur these fees every day, a basis point every day is seemingly not much but it's almost three percentage points over the course of the year, if you uh, consider that there are 252 trading days in a year, isn't it? And three percentage points a year is material. That can be a difference between out or underperforming the market. And what is beautiful here is that now we can bottom line click it all the way down and calculate our performance, both growth and net, as well as our rebalancings uh, for all of our trading days. Here, Let's calculate how many times did we rebalance, counting if our trading volumes and only going for the positive ones, so when we made a meaningful change to our allocation, we see that we rebalanced 2,517 times. Indeed, we rebalanced every uh, of those uh, 2,517 trading days. Then we can use product one plus to calculate the annualized gross return and annualized net return, raise it to the power of 252, which is the number of trading days in the year, divided by 2517, which is the number of sample days, minus one. That returns us 17.48% uh, per annum gross. And for the net, we can simply copy this formula, paste it below, and change the respective column reference to net returns instead. That would come at 15.48%. 16% uh, percent per annum on net, which is more than two percentage points per annum uh, lower than our gross return. And again, those small um, trading volumes and fees associated with that do uh, continuously compound and affect performance materially. And if your fees are larger, like 5%, this net return goes down even more sizably. For the risk, we can calculate the sample standard deviation for our gross returns. Again, as the fees uh, do not result from market movements, they result from our trading activity. Generally, when you calculate risk, you calculate the risk based on gross returns. Again, the differences would not be material. So we calculate the sample standard deviation for the daily volatility, and then we multiply it by the square root of 252 to get annualized volatility of our portfolio. Then we need to assume a risk for rate, and well, 4% seems realistic in the modern day environment. And for the Sharpe ratio, we can calculate our excess return using the net return and divide it by annualized volatility. So we can see that if we rebalance every day, basically forming a fixed weight portfolio, our Sharpe ratio is 0 
if we rebalance every other day, so rebalance every two days, we can see that now we do not rebalance well those days, and just as we demanded, we rebalance only every other day. That brings down the number of rebalancings, that reduces the amount of fees that we pay, and that also brings our sharp ratio up due to this fact. And if we see, it also reduces our risk slightly, although not necessarily very materially. If we rebalance every week, our sharp ratio is further increased due to the fact that we have to pay less in fees, and our risk stays roughly the same. If we rebalance every 21 days, so roughly every month, we can see that our sharp ratio is further increased due to, again, the uh, reduction in uh, cumulative fees that we pay, and our risk is also uh, getting uh, slightly reduced. If we do it every quarter, 63 days, we see the same trend continuing. Every half a year, 126 days, we see that the pattern has stopped and our sharp ratio has went down. Annually, went further down. So you might consider that somewhere between uh, quarterly and half annual rebalancing is optimal for this particular portfolio. And obviously you could study it further and uh, uh, look at various performance indicators you care about. Here we'll look at the sharp ratio, but you can also look at risk if you are particularly risk averse. You can look at fees that you pay if you decide to minimize those. And you can also experiment with allocations and see uh, does the allocation affect how often should you rebalance your portfolio in this case. And that's all there is in terms of applying, simulating and interpreting the optimal rebalancing frequency in Excel. Please leave a like on this video if you found it helpful. In the comments below, I'm going to see any further suggestions for videos in business, finance or economics you would like me to record. And please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and consider support us on Patreon. Thank you very much and stay tuned.